Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, 100 Degrees of MMK. Today, I'm going to go ahead and skip all of the introduction because I really want to get into a topic that's near and dear to my heart and I feel like it's pretty relevant to our time today, especially in the age of social media. So I know I haven't shared um, personal things with you guys beyond the surface level um, about me. But I really feel like it's um, a good time for me to speak about bullying and um, my experience growing up here in America with bullying. Um, you know, everybody's experience with bullying is very unique. So I just want to put that out there. My experience may not be the universal experience, but... Everybody has felt at some point like they don't belong or they're just not accepted or that something was wrong with who they were and how they looked and how they spoke. And I just really wanted to share my experience with bullying because it's now taking a new form and it's on social media. So there's only so much clapbacks that we as participants in the age of social media can actually deliver <clears throat> and I hope that today by me sharing my experience you guys can gain a different perspective on bullying is either you've been bullied before or were at one point the one doing the bullying and we've all grown and and matured and we know better now and so this is just another video encouraging us to do better based off of my own personal experience. Okay, so I think I mentioned in my About Me tag video sometime around last year that I came to America from the West African country of Sierra Leone. And I came here when I was um, four years old. You know, um, being a typical immigrant child, there's always going to be that sense of being different, especially in a new space, amongst new people and a different culture. So me growing up in the States here, Going to school was not easy, you know. Um, as a kid, you know, and I, I'm thinking about, I'm speaking in terms of the, the mentality of a kid because I see it now with my younger cousins and siblings that we're not really thinking too deep into the things that we say um, or how we react to things we're just we're just reacting because we know how we feel we know what's what's said to us is hurtful we can grasp onto tone and delivery at a very young age without having to be told what was meant by it so for me I experience bullying for just being one um, of a different ethnicity, I was African and not American. Two, from a colorist point of view, I was too dark, I was too ugly, my hair was too nappy, my nose was too wide, my even it even came down to my toes, um, because my one of my <laughs> both of my my big toes they kind of flick upward. And it's different, again, like not everybody is born the same way, but to kids, when differences aren't explained as not something to, to be frowned upon or looked down upon, the natural instinct is to laugh or to react with surprise or suspicion or curiosity and the delivery of which 
any of those can occur may not always be the right way to go about it because at the end of the day as kids we don't process things too complex you know we we react and we know how we feel um with that being said i really had a hard time <laughs> you know and one of the things that really um, struck me internally something that i internalized was that a lot of it was coming from people that look like me and i think that was probably the most devastating part of um, growing up in elementary school in america was because it wasn't so much that i wanted to fit in because naturally i felt and i understood that i stood out amongst the crowd and at that time like you know being four five I wasn't sure if that was a good thing or a bad thing but I knew that I stood out <coughs> so me as this four or five year old and later on progressing into a 10 12 13 14 year old I wasn't looking at it as oh I want to fit in so bad but it was a matter of why won't you accept me um, especially we are of the same hue like why won't you accept me you know um, I remember one of my earliest like um, experiences with bullying I remember when I was living back in Maryland there was this girl she was so pretty I don't even remember her name but I know she was so pretty um, she was fair-skinned and I know that everybody just liked her and um, it always seemed like I was being compared to her whenever um, it was joke time you know and I just didn't understand like why why is everybody so accepting of her and not of me and I would go home and I would, you know, complain. I'm like, you know, um, everybody thinks that I'm ugly and they call me names, they call me blackie, they call me ugly. I've gotten names um, such as, uh, excuse my French, but this is my experience, African booty scratcher. That's something I've heard from first grade up until the eighth grade, you know. I just didn't understand why it was so hard for the kids around me to just accept me. I would say between um, the age five to seven, I wasn't much of a of a fighter. I know that um, I did act out of anger or just like spite, you know, for a very long time. I um, didn't really associate myself with the other kids. You know, um, I just started to focus on um, things that I was good at, which was actually, you know, paying attention in class and doing what I had to do to, to at least feel some sort of pride in myself because I knew that there was no way that I could get through or get across to um, the kids around me. I did have one good friend, um, I still remember her name, her name was Rachel, and she lived not too far from from my house. Her, her mom was Jamaican, and her dad was Liberian, and um, she and I, we grew really close, and then when I moved to New York, I never saw her again, and we never spoke again, but... You know, um, one of my, a lot of my best experiences <coughs> while I was going through my bullying um, was having and creating friendships with my um, fellow Caribbean friends. And I say this not to be divisive, but a lot of um, my friends today and people that were more accepting of me from the start were my um friends of Caribbean heritage. I don't know if it was just the 
matter of similarity in culture or I'm not sure if they went through the same thing um, being here in, in America or being um, children of descendants of Caribbean um, pa uh, children of parents of Caribbean descent um, but you know those were the ones that always had my back it got really worse and um, in middle school I will say like it got to the point where I was crying at school and on my way home from school more often you know when you come home and you explain to um, your family especially um, an immigrant family like things like bullying calling names especially in I know heavily in, in African families that's like small small things like that's something you should be able to handle that's something that you off the rip should know that um, doesn't apply to you what they say and um, so because they call you ugly it means you're ugly now like those type of conversations was what I was used to um, partially but then on the other hand I would have like family members like my older cousins to be like you know what we're gonna um, play the same game here if if it's your hair that they're talking about, we're going to make sure that your hair is 100% did all the time. If it's your clothing, we're going to make sure you have the best clothing. <coughs> like whatever it is on the exterior um, that you feel is part of the reason why you're being bullied so much, we're going to do to our best ability to make sure that it doesn't affect your experience at school no more and of course <laughs> the exterior things cannot fix what's happening in here I guess as those things happened and I wasn't cognizant of these things I just felt like well they're just gonna still dislike me still gonna call me African booty scratch or still gonna call me ugly I'm still gonna be the one that the boys laugh at I'm still gonna be the one the girls you know giggle and talk about or you know um, publicly you know demean or say something offensive about me and um, who I was so it didn't really help as much you know in some ways it it did build my confidence in other ways it did still um, not have a big effect on me but nonetheless my family was ready to to step up they did step up when they realized that it was a real problem you know um it was it, like just thinking about how much of a hard time that I had especially the fact that my Africanness somewhat made me inferior to my peers in the sense that oh you guys must come from huts and that and that term African booty stretcher I'm sorry that term stuck with me and I'm sure a lot of other African kids for the simple fact that like as kids I'm not seeing you as any different and it just bothered me that my first interaction with people that looked like me but just happened to be of a different ethnicity and different culture automatically that was you know what would come out of their mouths and like I said again earlier on kids no matter what age in between five through the rest of adolescence they're gonna say ignorant things they're gonna say things that they may not even know the full meaning or the repercussions of the things that they're saying but because it sounds cool or they may be dealing with you dealing with things on their own and them being the bullies of the defense mechanism for themselves they project all of that energy onto somebody they seem that's weaker or somebody that they feel may not be in their league and they want to pull you down and even though I didn't have the confidence uh, most times to stand up for myself until later on in middle school and um, even though I wasn't 
you know, the first one to to throw a punch. I didn't even, I think I only had like one altercation my entire middle school life and one when I was in elementary. But because I'm not a confrontational person, naturally, my first thing is to always um, speak, you know, to, to defend myself verbally. And if pushed, then that's how it becomes a matter of a physical education. Thank God um, I did have incredible um, teachers and some of them who are still my mentors to this day who encouraged me every day and who um, reminded me to just stay focused. And it's so hard to stay focused on things that you are passionate about. Like I loved doing poetry. I still do poetry to this day. I love the performing arts. I love drawing. There was a lot of things that I really loved. You know, I started my love for the camera and, you know, learning about these things in the fourth grade. And thank God to, thank God for a lot of my teachers who took notice and um, maybe spent a little bit more time with me after school or when I would break down because I used to break down tremendously and as I'm speaking now I'm trembling because I'm remembering how bad it was for me. I remember at one point um, I think this was the first time that I actually allowed um, the bullies in school to see me cry because one of my biggest things is I don't like to allow other people to see me cry. You'll probably see me upset in my face, you'll see that I'm down, but to really release what's happening inside of me, like I've, and I think it's just outside of bullying, that's just me in general, like I hold on to things until, until, until I can't, I can't take it anymore myself, it be, until it becomes too heavy of a burden for me to hold on to. And um, I remember one time, I was online and I just started to cry because somebody had said something. There was this, there was like, there was like ringleaders in the pack of bullying and Manji. If it's not for my name, for my hair, um, for the fact that I wasn't really appealing or attracted to a lot of the boys. <laughs> and I'm just like, when I think about it, like none of these boys that were making fun of me were in my league but I just didn't see that or one of these girls were in my league now just thinking about it now but in that moment in that time I was just so fragile minded and I started to cry and like um one of my junior high school teachers whom was still um, one of my very close mentors was just saying like this lady she she reminded me of like what my family members would would do or say when I like when I start to allow those things to affect me on the inside. Like she brought the tough love, but she also brought the understanding, and it really pushed me and propelled me forward. And just like I just kept on moving forward. You know, the bullying did get worse, but I I just kept pushing. You know, I did what I had to do in school. I was valedictorian in eighth grade, and um, I was in the high top 2% for high school. In high school, I didn't have to deal with with with, um, with bullying, or at least even if I felt like anything was happening sideways um, behind my back, it didn't affect me as much because I had already embraced um, standing out, you know. I no longer did perms in high school I wore out my natural hair more often and proudly and I I really started to learn more about myself and I was embracing I had already had help at home embracing my African heritage or just me being different and it took a lot of help it took a lot of people it took a lot of counseling at school to really get me through um, bullying and honestly if I was a lawmaker 
<laughs> I would make bullying as bad as misdemeanor because today, today in this day and age of social media, there's so many kids killing themselves at much younger ages now. It's not it's not like before where it used to be 16, 17. It's like 7, 10 years old. Like, what could those children really be harboring so much that they would want to take their own lives? Like, that's a problem. That's an epidemic. And now it's on social media. So people can really hide behind the... the um, the iPhones, the computers, the iPads, the whatever um, source of media it is, and say really spiteful, really hurtful things, and not face the repercussions of having to say it to your face, you know, not having to face the repercussions of your fist, your words, you know. God forbid if you don't come back with the best clap back, then you are then even more ridiculed. You know, it happens to celebrity, it happens to children, adults. Everybody is a lot more targetable on social media now when it comes to bullying. And one of the hardest things about coming from a past of bullying is one, internalization, um, and thinking that everyone around you is out to get you. So one of my biggest um, opportunities is taking constructive criticism. Like I really sometimes have to sit back and try to discern between what is constructive criticism, what is destructive criticism, what is just plain ignorance, what is just plain bias. Like that's something for me um, going into wanting to pursue a career in communications in the long run that's one of my biggest opportunities that's something that I'm going to have to work on and I work on continuously even even now when I don't want to hear the truth and the truth is being told to me if I don't like the delivery because now I'm more cognizant of the delivery before the message and that's something that I'm still trying to work on like you know if the delivery is wrong, to me, the message is wrong. And sometimes I I'm, I have to learn to take it at, with a grain of salt and actually try to break everything down, what is actually being said to me, you know, what's, what's the real message. And sometimes I just have to appreciate that regardless of what the delivery was, the message had a good intention behind it and sometimes that's not the case so the first the first problem that i have is one discernment on uh, discernment of when to internalize and when not to internalize and then two the second hardest part about coming from a past of bullying and being the, the survivor of bullying is learning to not become a bully yourself and you know, I say this to say because anything that is done to you, any type of learned behavior, you, whether you're cognizant of it or not, you reproduce in so many different ways. Like, you know, there's been plenty of times where I may have internalized and reacted to something on social media and may have come off as a bully, you know, to somebody. And... Sometimes I do find myself writing long paragraphs and replies just so that I can get all three components of what I'm saying down from the message to delivery and also trying to get my point across without, you know, offending somebody. But what I've also learned um, is that people are going to remain willfully ignorant. They're going to pick apart the things that they find the most um, damaging to hold you accountable for however you say it. you could say something in the nicest way possible and somebody can take it at first glance as the worst thing ever and depending on your relationship to that person whether it be a stranger or somebody that you're close to you will then get the opportunity to clarify and 
fix some things that was said in that message. So, um, with, I know that was a long story, but I just wanted to share with you guys my story and hopefully you guys can relate and share your own stories as well. Comment below, tell me what you thought about um, my experience and offer any advice for me to forward because like I said, it's something that I'm still learning to learn.